Saki mwemwe na kwa le mchele kwa kukuku mwaga Sako na wapenda ya tusema nitasikia Hello, my name is Paula Tavro and I'm the professor of community health sciences at the University of California, Los Angeles, which is sometimes called UCLA. And the topic of my talk today is obstetric fistula. So first, what is obstetric fistula? Well, it is a childbirth injury that arises when a woman has been uh, laboring for a very long time. So what's called prolonged labor. And so she's laboring for so long that the baby's head is, being, is putting an inordinate amount of pressure on the uterine wall. So the wall between the uterus and the bladder. And so that pressure of trying to get out uh, can lead to necrosis. In other words, that blood doesn't get to the tissue. And so the tissue can start to slough off and leave a hole between the bladder and the uterus. Or alternatively, there could be a hole between the bladder and the rectum, um, or both. And uh, when there are these holes, that means that afterwards, if the woman has survived, then she no longer has control either of her bladder, so in other words, she's incontinent and urine is constantly dribbling out through the vagina, or she could be um, incontinent uh, through, the, through the rectum. So in other words, feces are constantly dribbling out, or it could be both. Um, so as you can imagine, um, this is a, is a very disabling condition. It leads women to um, ha have a constant stench, and they are soiling themselves a lot, can lead them to feel even suicidal. And um, so often um, the community will ostracize them or turn them into an outcast because of the stench. They don't want the woman in church or in the market or on a bus. And sometimes her own uh, husband or uh, family will abandon her. So this can lead to really terrible um, poverty and, uh, and depression of women and can go on for years. Um, but the good news is that it can be treated. And so um, many women don't realize this. Uh, they think that they're cursed or they think there was something that they did that brought on this condition. But it, it really is no fault of their own. It's due either to the fact that the baby's head was too large to come out through the birth canal or possibly it was a breach presentation, um, or the woman was stunted uh, when she was young, so or very short in stature. So, um, so as a result, she just was not able to deliver the baby uh, vaginally. So um, the, if the woman gets to a hospital with a trained physician who is uh, experienced in performing obstetric fistula repairs, then uh, in over 90% of the cases, women can be successfully repaired. Uh, sometimes it will take several surgeries, um, but it's very important for women to know that, um, that in most cases they can be treated. Um, but even more important is to know how to prevent obstetric fistula in the first place, and that is to ensure that every woman delivers in a hospital or in a health facility in which she has access to cesarean section. So that's the critical thing. And some people have uh, the misconception that if a woman has delivered um, vaginally with no problems in the past, then uh, she doesn't need to go to a hospital. But every delivery is different. And so it could happen on the first delivery, it could happen on the third or the fifth or the seventh. 
one never knows. So it's very important that every woman be able to deliver uh, in uh, a hospital with a trained provider. So the good news is that obstetric fistula can be treated, it can be prevented, but the sad news is that there are a lot of women suffering with this condition right now. Thanks so much for your time. Bye-bye. Nani paga moyo nikeza kulia chuzu na fusia.